I've looked at a few UVC germicidal lamps recently, and one of the items on eBay that caught my attention was what appears to be a disco light that puts out near UV, that deep violet light. But in this instance, they're saying UV disinfection lamp, 36 volt, 100, 240 volt, 99% kill. And if you look at the listing itself, it states 253.7 nanometer UV germicidal light ultraviolet disinfection ozone sterilization lamp. Now, it's interesting to note that 253.7 nanometers is a peak wavelength in traditional mercury vapor ultraviolet tubes. So this is uh, the only type I actually recommend at the moment. This and uh, the little uh, quartz version of all the kind of UV all quartz glass, both of them are. But either this tiny little version that you often find in products like this sterilizing device or the straight tube or the U-tube type ultraviolet UVC tubes where it gives off that ghostly blue glow inside. Very attractive, but really bad for you if you look at it. Let's put that out of the way. Um, However, with a traditional mercury vapor lamp, it gives off that visual blue look because it has about eight separate uh, spectral lines. I can show you that. I've got a wee note here. Let's just bring this in because it's all useful information, isn't it? From Wikipedia. Um, so the two that are of interest in the mercury vapor ultraviolet tubes are the 184 uh, nanometer, which give, it's the ultraviolet wavelength that splits the air down. It splits the oxygen molecules apart and uh, that creates ozone. However, you can get versions of these tubes that the glass has been doped, so it filters that out and they don't produce ozone, but they do produce 253.7 nanometers, which is the UVC that's used for germicidal purposes. Um, so that's where they've got the 253.7 nanometer thing here. They've just copied it from the mercury uh, vapor lamps. Uh, the other output of these tubes that is interesting is quite a strong sort of violet line. Well, the, it says here the strong violet and green lines are what gives it that lovely turquoisey colour. And uh, if you look, the, it's got the violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. It has different strengths of output in those wavelengths. I've kind of really gone completely off tangent here. That's not what this is about. It's, uh, but the main thing is that that's where they got the 253.7 nanometer thing from. However, I bought one of these lights and they've immediately changed it. I bought several ultraviolet light, UVC lights, the germicidal ones. I expect them to be fake. One of them the seller cancelled immediately. Another one, the listing got taken down by eBay. This is, is the one that arrived and they've now changed to doesn't post to Isle of Man. They obviously don't like that aspect. And it compares it to the mercury vapour lamps. So this is a... This is one of those mercury vapor lamps that has been squiggled in the background because it's obviously a rival's product. They're, they're basically slagging off. And it says, traditional UV disinfection lamp. 360 degree uniform astigmatism will cause, one, insufficient disinfection and sterilization, and two, the family must leave the irradiation area when the light is turned on, or someone will cause injury through the artificial human skin. That's just gibberish. That doesn't even... But the idea is they're saying... Ours is better than theirs. And you know what? It's worse than that. They've got the listing with this sort of deep purple colour picture in it, but they've also tweaked it in Photoshop to make it look that colder, bluer, closer to the mercury vapour type thing. Cheats. Uh, they also make uh, claims that uh, it kills E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus and Candida albicans and mites, but it doesn't. I don't think it does at all. Let's take it to bits. Here's the light. It arrived intact, as you can see, with a big, huge dent in the side. It's uh, it's certainly very robust. Comes with helpful instructions. I should mention that the pedigree of this light is demonstrated by the fact that to find this on eBay, search for DMX germic germicidal, because it is in fact a disco light. Right, put the box down there. It's a disco light, which means it has DMX in, DMX out, and it has the little options that you can uh, set the modes, the address, things like that. Ultimately, it's just a disco light, isn't it, really? However, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. So I'll plug it in. 
loud noise of a fan that's not very happy and a really deep purple light. Now, if this was real UVC, it wouldn't be a deep purple light. However, let's give them the benefit of the doubt because... I'll unplug this in a moment. Uh, let's give them the benefit of the doubt because real UVC LEDs... Now, let's take a look at a real one. This is one that's available from Banggood. And you can see the construction of the LED is very different from normal. It's got a sort of metal body. It's got the chip in there, which I'm guessing is deposited onto the back of a piece of quartz. Not sure. It's got a protection uh, component across it just to protect that from uh, static damage. And I'm guessing that this is a little quartz window on top or a UVO glass window to pass the ultraviolet because if you put this in a standard LED package it would the UVC would basically break the chemical bonds of the plastics and resins and it would break them down so this might be what's in there except this one LED costs between 4 and 5 pounds typically and this thing costs 16 pounds and there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 LEDs in it which doesn't bode too well However, a, th a thing worthy of note is that when you see these ones, you can buy on eBay, you can buy little UVC water sterilizers. And it contains one of these LEDs in a circuit board, but it also contains some visible LEDs around it so you know it's on. Because the bare LED in its own is not going to emit much light on its own unless it causes a fluorescence and material around its vicinity. So they quite often have a visual LED as well, a visible LED, just to show you that it's lit. And, you know, technically speaking, that's what they could be using here. Except that these total internal reflection lenses for collimating the light probably wouldn't really work with UVC. Now, tell you what, there's a test we can do. It's notable that it would have been great if I'd be able to just sniff it and go, hmm, is there ozone? No, there's not. But that's because uh, even the UV LEDs like this one produce, uh, they're, they're pretty much just on the edge of the UVC spectrum and they don't go high enough, uh, short enough wavelength to actually produce ozone. That is such annoying. We're going to have to open this up and find out. But, uh, so there wouldn't be a smell of ozone. So what about, it's quite powerful. What if I pointed it straight at the back of my hand and then I sniff my hand to see if there's any skin damage? Nope, there's no skin damage. Well, that is not really hinting at UVC. Right, tell you what, let's open this up. Let us open this light up. Slightly different construction from some of the other ones. And the question is, uh, why are they doing this? I have to say, this isn't something they've just done recently to cash in on uh, the covid virusy type thing they've been putting these out as germicidal for a while just i, I really don't know why because uh, if this is what i think it is and that's uh, near uv which means deep violet which produces all the sort of disco ultraviolet effects without any um without uh, well it's the cheapest way to do it led wise uh if that's the case i've kind of lost my tangent where i was going there Ooh, oh that's why they're making noise Hold on, let's plug this in now. Is that, was it something pressed against the fan? Is it a faulty fan? Yeah, that was a wire stuffed into the fan. Okay, well that's resolved. Right, tell you what, let's pop the fan off. So where was I there? I, I was talking about them selling them as sort of germicidally type lamps, but... Um, yeah, I've completely forgotten where I was going there. That often happens. It doesn't really matter. Let's get this open. I should mention that this is using a standard arrangement here. They've got a switchboard power supply. They've got the little uh, satellite board for the um, connectors, the DMX connectors. And then they've got the actual control PCB underneath. We'll take a look at that. But first of all, let's take a look at these LEDs, noting that if they are really UVC, which they're not, it's just, they're not going to, why am I doing this? It's just, it's just, I'm on a hiding to nothing, as they say. It's going to be the standard one watt LEDs and materials that would totally disintegrate if they were exposed to UVC radiation. But anyway, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Almost there, almost there. Here's the circuit board, leaving all the lens. Oh, right, the lenses are clipped on. Radio. Is it going to be its standard 1 watt Luxian star type LEDs? 
It's uh, just, it's fig. Yeah, they are just standard. Hold on, I'll plug it in again. They're just standard near UV LEDs. It's completely fake. Okay, that was to be expected. Righty ho. Let's um, investigate this further. As is traditional with these things, they've got that horrible arrangement that these connectors are the opposite polarity to each other. So I have to be quite careful to make sure I'm going to leave that one in place. Let's take a look. I like the fact that the in this panel, it's not relying on the front to hold those little lenses on. It is the separate little lenses that are clipped into these housings that then clip around the LEDs themselves. That's quite nice. Okay, it's not going to kill germs, but it's quite nice. It's going to make you look fabulous at a disco, unless you've got teeth that glow in the dark with the ultraviolet. Okay, let's make sure this is unplugged. There is a capacitor there. Let's stick the finger across that capacitor. Yeah, it's discharged. One day that is going to bite me. Oh, shit, they've done it again. They've done it again. Excuse me, I'll just put that out of the way so it doesn't make loud squeaky noises. Rightio, let's pull these screws out of here. They've used standard screws in most of these locations. That's quite nice. Look at this. Look at this. They've done it again. I'll zoom down in this because this just pisses me off so much. Here is the electrical separation, right? And you think, well, that's good. There's the freaking opti, opti isolator and it's just goodbye electrical separation because the opti isolator just defeats all that separation. Twats. Just why do they do that? But uh, the gist of it is we've got a little switch mode chip. Let's just, while we've got this open, let's explore it. The chip is, oh, let's use a different magnifying glass for this one. It's, uh, is that CSC7203 says, I was, I was going to say, it says ST and it STS Thompson, but it's not. Uh, let me just show you this, in fact. There we go. Not that you're going to really see an awful lot because it's quite hard to read that. And because you need to clean the dust off the lens, apparently. But it's basically a little switch mode supply. Mains incoming supply goes to the bridge rectifier. There's a fuse before that. Gets smoothed by this uh, death beam capacitor because uh, it is rated about 400 volts, is it not? Yes, 400 volts for death beams. 8.2 meg fard. Classic circuitry. The opto-isolator is probably this little capacitor here is for... Uh, stabilizing the feedback uh, we've got this little capacitor here is going to be the buck uh, not the buck the bootstrap capacitor that uh, derives the supply purely for the uh, chip from an auxiliary winding and then we get a little snubber network here to actually protect it decent enough power supply but they've really screwed up with that Let's zoom out a little bit because this is just getting slightly nauseating me shoving it right up to the camera like that. the output goes through a diode then a capacitor, and that's more or less it. It's got a very simple circuit. It's got a, a resistor and what looks like a zener diode to basically trigger the uh, the opto isolator when the voltage goes above a certain level. That is it. And as usual, the... Is it? Yes, they have. They've got these connectors on different way around. That's just odd. So that if you put the connectors in the wrong position, it blows your stuff up. That's nice. Uh, on the bottom of the unit here... Let's whip that out. It's going to be pretty familiar, I would guess. So there's a the power going on. Let's uh, take this out. This is basically turned into a review of an ultraviolet disco light now. So what do you reckon? Do you reckon I should uh, open a claim on eBay? Because it's not as stated. What do we have here? We have four transistors for four channels. 
uh, how many channels are on this? It does look like they've got four uh, channels of LEDs. That means this is designed uh, to have a cluster of white LEDs and then probably, yeah, because it, it says R and then G and this one will probably say B, yep. It's designed to have uh, red, green, blue LEDs and maybe white, yeah, it says W for white. So uh, this is a generic little uh, disco light with the four transistors and it'll be doing that thing that uh, there's very little in the way of current limiting. It pre-scales the output in the pulse of modulation from the intensity control or pre-scale it just to uh, compensate for, you know, so say for instance the red LEDs of a, a lower voltage at full output, they won't be on all the time. They'll be pulse of modulating to so that their average power is a uh, is the one watt per LED. Other than that, uh, we've got the microcontroller. We've got the uh, well, that's the microcontroller there. Nuvo. Oh, that's Nuvoton. Okay, what is that then? EIP. 650EO. What is that doing? Is that a, that might be a serial display driver? This will almost certainly be the little uh, the network 75176. Yeah, that's the one that drives the DMX network and receives the data as well. It's just absolutely typical. It's fundamentally a disco light. So there we go. Um, yeah. Disco lights that emit light that's not even in the ultraviolet spectrum at all. It's just hitting the very edge of it, the end of the blue spectrum, being passed off as UV disinfection and uh, germicidal lamps. That's a bit naughty, but um, it's not the only one. There's a lot of this going on in eBay. But there we go. It was worth taking it to bits anyway and seeing what was inside.